All right, welcome to our presentation. Today, we're going to be taking a look at our training and development plan. The main issue that we're looking to go over is doubling the year over year sales for a sales driven organization. This will be presented by Daniela, Michaela, Shoiba, and John. So first, we're going to discuss a little bit about the company. So the company itself specializes in the production of lifelike, live, and 3D interactive holograms. So you can see a little picture there on the right hand side of a hologram that is appearing and she is a model that is showing off some designer clothes in the retail situation. The company itself was founded in 2015 and has been frequently expanding its headcount across the organization since again, it was founded in 2015. So the itch itself is that it wants to, the company itself wants to increase the yearly sales from 10 million to 20 million. The main concern here is without increasing the headcount. So you can imagine doubling sales without increasing the headcount is a little bit of a tricky situation. Currently the team is about 60 people worldwide 20 of which are on the sales team and about 40 work in other operational roles related to research and development, project delivery, finance, the leadership team, et cetera. The itch itself comes from a strong push from the C-suite executives, the board of directors and shareholders to achieve profitability and doubling sales from last year. So you can understand between the push from the C-suite, the board of directors and the shareholders that it's really important that the sales team is able to double this, hit that profitability, Otherwise, the shareholders, the board of directors and C-suite might lose faith in the company, which you can obviously understand is a little bit of an issue. In terms of some of the background as it relates to the sales organization. So generally speaking, the sales themselves and the opportunities would come from either inbound leads, which generate would tend to generate through our website, or they come from outbound lead generation efforts, which generally involve a sales rep directly reaching out to a cold lead or a prospect that may be interested in the product. In terms of the general sales process itself, it generally starts with an introduction between the sales rep and the person that's gonna end up purchasing the product. It goes through product demonstrations, which is the very pivotal position where uh, the person goes from seeing the product for the first time to actually seeing if there might be a fit in their business. Then it goes through the quotation and proposal development phase where the sales rep works to put towards quotations and proposals that would be able to impress the buyer and ideally it transitions to a purchase. From there, if the buyer is interested, it shifts to the contract phase in which contracts are prepared to get a mutual agreement on both sides. And lastly, after the contractual terms have been agreed to, it goes to project delivery. To understand a little bit more about the sales organization itself, we want to look at the average deal size. So there's two different types. There's a sale of the equipment or there's a rental of the equipment. Sales can range anywhere from about $100,000 to $200,000, which relates to a permanent installation. The organization owns the product and the company itself doesn't have too much more involvement outside of annual service packages and things along those lines. In terms of a rental, it's usually a short-term rental, generally for an event. So the hologram would be able to appear for the event, but nothing too much else after that, the company still owns the equipment. In terms of the deal sizes, the deal sizes are uncapped. So it could go anywhere from you know $25,000 all the way up to tens of millions of dollars if a company is interested in purchasing, the, purchasing that many. And for the sales reps themselves, commissions are uncapped and they earn uh, commissions on all of the revenue that is generated. For a little bit more background, the company's star product itself sells for approximately $65,000 per unit and is rented for about $20,000 per unit for a general sale or rental. So the objective of our sales training program is to have sales personnel double company sales revenue by the end of the year. We're going to look into things like active, uh, effectively selling, attracting larger deals, and upselling. So by the end of the training session, all sales personnel will be able to effectively sell. They'll be able to attract larger deals for our company, and they'll be able to learn how to upsell for us. Okay, so diving deeper into the training delivery, we are going to be discussing off the job and on the job training methods. And we will first discuss all the off the job training methods that will be happening throughout our lesson plan for sales mastery, which will be taking place um, off the job. And this will be conducted during a nine to five training session. So there will be four different sections of this training session. Uh, the first one will be a discussion of and retainment of company knowledge and making sure that all sales representatives are able to understand this. Um, next, we will be going into three other different sections of the off the job training, which will include the focus on the lecture method and a strong incorporation of audio visual content that will be integrated. Throughout this, we will discuss topics such as sales objectives, conducting a sales pitch, attracting larger deals, and upselling and sealing the deal. All of these will have um, video presentations as well as lectures that will sort of debrief each video 
for um, sales representatives understanding. Um, and each section will actually have a short role play exercise where each junior and intermediate sales representative will be able to do an exercise such as um, practicing a sales pitch, as well as doing an upselling, attracting larger deals and sealing the deal. And finally, there will be one large breakout activity which they will be doing a large role play activity, which will be a full approach to the whole sales conversation and a complete walkthrough. Next slide, please. So following this off the job training, we will actually have coaching and job rotation that will be integrated when employees are to return back to work at the sales floor. So throughout this um, off the job training, each each individual will be broken out into five different groups, which will include one sales lead, one junior sales representative, and two intermediate sales leads. So the one sales lead will actually be um, everyone's point of contact within that group, and that's where coaching will be conducted. Also, there are sales representatives who focus on fully rental sales and fully purchasing sales, and obviously there will be some points in times where they will integrate both. However, when they come back on the job, those who have more experience with rental sales and those who will have experience with purchasing sales will sort of switch so they can um, make sure that they maintain all job knowledge that would be required of them. I'll now pass it off to Shoaiba to discuss the role playing technique. Okay, so we're going to dive into the role play activity. Um, the goal of this activity is to practice, of up, uh, practice upselling and making a sale. So one person will act as the customer, one person will act as a uh, sales associate, and both individuals will then be given a prompt to use as a base in acting out the role play exercise. And then the person playing the sales associate will then be given feedback about their performance. In this, in this scenario, we will assume that um, a, a customer has rented out the pro a product for, for their event, um, and then after the event has concluded, the role of the sales associate will be to try and persuade the customer to purchase the product so that they can use it for future events. Um, within this scenario, Shoeba will be the sales consultant, John will be the sales associate, Daniela will be the customer, and Michaela will be the spectator. Hey, John, it was great to meet you, and I'm so happy that we were able to use your product at our year-end gala. It was fabulous, and we actually have a few other events coming up that we'd like to make some more rentals in advance just so we can secure our spot. Hey, yeah, no, that'd be a great opportunity. I love to hear, you know, that you enjoy the product and that you're interested in integrating it into future events. A potential recommendation I'd make is, you know, the cost to actually purchase it and, and rent it every single time. It starts to get really, you know, up there, uh, and in terms of your capital expenditure, it's a little bit more expensive. A recommendation that I might make is that you could purchase the product instead of renting it every time. This will allow you to have it on hand and you'd be able to integrate it into your events really without having to come to us and worry with, uh, about you know dealing with us. In addition, we'd be able to offer some project management help. So we'd be able to get that event done for you, but there'd be a lower capital expenditure on your side, a little bit of ongoing costs on, on our side. So we're able to get the revenue in our pockets. It'll be a little bit cheaper for you guys. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, we're thinking of having three more events throughout the year that are um, particularly large enough that we would maybe want to use your services. Um, however, how many times do you think um, utilizing your product would actually allow us to break even? Because as we already have a lot of events lined up, uh, we just want to see how far in the future that we could utilize this and it would actually, um, you know, as it's a benefit to you, how could it be a benefit to us if you have a bit more of information on that? Yeah, definitely. So every the average event usually costs between about twenty and fifty thousand dollars. So assuming between this event and the future events, you mentioned there's going to be about three of them. Let's say even on the low end, that'll cost you about a hundred thousand dollars, and the high end it could be all the way up to two hundred thousand dollars. Our general full package costs around a hundred thousand dollars. We could do a little bit of a, a sales and a little bit of a discount because you guys have purchased from us in the past. We really appreciate it and we always want to keep our customers happy and keep them coming back. So we can definitely talk about the cost. What I would probably say is it's going to come in around eighty thousand dollars. So even assuming you'd be doing four events at that twenty five thousand dollars or even more into the future past those three events, the capital expenditure would automatically be lower. That eighty thousand dollars includes a five year service package and all of the products and services that you'd need to be successful. In addition, we do have a client services team that would be able to provide you additional service past when we just make the, the delivery to you guys. And in terms of the actual product delivery and the event, we'll have a client services team for you that'd be able to be your dedicated rep to make sure that everything goes smoothly. And again, the capital expenditure is about $20,000 lower and that's five years. So even if you have you know four, 10, 20 events into the future, 
you're only paying that eighty thousand dollars and no more what are your thoughts oh interesting well thank you and i really like the idea of this um client services could you just tell me a little bit more about that and how i would have access like would this be more one-on-one -on -one meetings or would we sort of have like an on-call situation and um i'm not sure exactly if um, you know this particular evidence, but would we actually continue to have access to them for like a certain period of time after purchasing? Or would it just be sort of like an initial expense on our end that we'd have to get all of our information in one go? No, so the client services team is you'll have a dedicated rep. So in that $80,000 comes with a five year service package. Included in that five year service package is updates to our software, but also a dedicated client services rep that would be there to support you any time of the day, any time of, you know, any time of need, if it's at a specific event, if it's, you know, in the middle of doing a product update, anything along those lines, your dedicated client services rep is there to help you. It is included in a five year service package. And if you're interested in expanding it past there, we can discuss in a couple of years what it would look like to keep you guys on board in the in the client services package. Um, so I'd love to love to get your thoughts on that. And if you're interested, I'd be happy to send you over a fully detailed quotation right after we jump off this call. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that actually sounds wonderful. And I'd completely love that if you could send me over that quote. Also, I want to talk to um, some of my other representatives from our company, and maybe we could just book an additional meeting with you just to go over everything and like the possible invoice of us purchasing that from you, because I think this would be a good opportunity for our organization. I agree. I love the fit. I'll send you over some time. Uh, maybe we can look for some some alignment in our calendars. I'll also send you that quotation so you guys can take a look, prepare some questions, and I'd be happy to chat through what that quotation looks like if you have any questions and we'd love to get you guys out for another product demonstration if there's any more people that are interested in taking a peek. Uh, Danielle, I really appreciate the time on the call. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can always reach me and um, I look forward to chatting further. Yeah, same to you. Thank you for your time and for your services. We're so excited to meet with you again. Thanks so much. I totally agree. Thank you, John and Daniela. That was a great example of, um, of this demonstration. Um, First things first, um, John, good job with offering that discount. This way, I think the customer is still paying more on the spot rather than um, the company taking the risk where the customer may not rent the product in the future events. Um, one thing that you could add is a is to create a feeling of, of urgency where you provide them with like a limited time offer with, in which um, they, they would feel more wanting to uh, purchase that product. Um, in that urgent way as well. Um, and in the future, if the customer does not agree at the end of it, um, maybe you could send them newsletters by, by giving them like news about your company or um, also those newsletters could contain product updates or like any events and stuff like that, or even like discounts that you could offer them. Um, and lastly, a huge thing that, that could go a long way is just a sim simple phone call. Um, once in a while um, with that company to let them know that, hey, we're still thinking about you if, if you'd like to purchase a product from us. Awesome. I really appreciate the feedback. Um, Michaela, I'm just wondering if there's any questions that you might have had or do you think everything was, was fairly clear in that demonstration that you might be able to add that to you know, your day-to-day -day work? It was clear. I'd be comfortable doing that now. Awesome. Okay, now I'm going to hand it over to Michaela who's going to talk about the appropriateness of the training methods. Perfect. So now we're going to get into why the training methods we chose were very appropriate. Um, looking at this chart for off the, off the job training, um, just on site, we chose lecture, audio visual and role play for the methods that we were going to use in our training program. We chose lecture because it gave us the knowledge that we needed. Although the skills and attitudes aren't given, um, it is low cost and it actually partners with something like audio visual, which also gives us knowledge. And um, although the skills and attitudes are pretty low as well. When we look at something like role playing, it kind of carries that weight for us. So we chose role playing because although there was no knowledge, it gave us the skills, it, the exact skills that we wanted to transfer to on the job. So it kind of partners with audio visual and lecture into doing what we wanted to do. Looking at the cost, lecture is low cost, audio visual is medium or is low cost as well, whereas role play is more on the medium side. So we're not really affected on that side. So it, in terms of cost effectiveness, it worked for us. And then when you look at job transfer, although lecture and audio visual on, are on the lower side, um, role play is a, um, the higher version and we wanted that high transfer over. So we looked at something like role play and lecture audio visual to kind of partner together to make sure that they're learning exactly what they need to learn in the training, and then they can bring it to job transfer. 
Now, in terms of on the job training, we chose a sort of an ongoing buddy system, um, which is also referred to as coaching. So in this coaching, an experienced and knowledgeable personnel is formally called upon to help another person develop insights, techniques, um, and just a basically accomplish things on the job. So where there's like help needed, they can go to that more experienced person to make sure that you know, everything that they learned on the training is still being transferred on the job. And we're getting all the clients that we need. And like our objective, objective is to double sales by the end of the year. And now I'm gonna pass it off to Daniela to end our pre presentation. So in conclusion, we feel that based on the methods that we have discussed through our off the job training, um, as well as the KSAs that we have implemented will allow us to um, have an improvement on our job training transfer. And this will allow us to double our sales from 10 million to 20 million and um, truly affect us in a positive manner in the long run. Um, however, we will mostly be focusing on our on the job training after um, this training has taken place. Um, so during our off the job training, um, error management was really not in, encouraged. However, when we complete our on the job training, it is truly encouraged as it will help trainees learn from their mistakes and learn how to strategize for mistakes and be able to have effective habits within our trainees. So this will increase a transfer of training further um, and will help ensure that trainees are truly learning by making the mistakes and allowing them to move forward into becoming successful sales representatives. So overall, we feel that we are able to succeed from these outcomes and um, through our on and off the job training. So we believe that we will confidently be able to um, make this sales goal for next year. So thank you so much for listening to our presentation and feel free to ask any questions if you feel free.